start this video off with some mail. We got the mail. Freaking advertising, probably. King Supers. Oh, I need to pay my post office box fee. <laughs> President Trump's coronavirus guidelines for America. What? He has guidelines? I thought he had it all under control. What are you doing? That's really interesting. Um, are you going to put that in the post office box? I'm going to pretend that I'm reading my mail. And really, I'm recording this guy. Let's turn this camera back on. What is he doing? I have no idea. We're going to get all the cameras back on. I should have left the cameras on so I could see where that guy came from. I left my phone out here. Jesus. I'm getting super sloppy. How many pictures can you take of a flower on top of a box? A mailbox at that. Oh, he's getting serious. He just took his glasses off. This is getting real, people. I don't know what's going on. What's up, Internet? Welcome back. Today, I want to talk about arm pump. I was in a conversation not that long ago. And we were talking about arm pump in the context of like road racers you don't really hear about arm pump issues with road racers all that often and i say that coming from a heavy motocross background where arm pump is is a much bigger and prevalent problem even with the top top pros they still pump up from time to time under certain conditions it might be the track it might be you know race one You've got the, the butterflies, season starting, you're nervous. Um, but in the road racing world, probably like the most recent, most high profile uh, road racer to have arm pump issues, bad enough that they actually got surgery. I think it was Danny Pedrosa. If I got that wrong, I'll, I'll correct it while I'm editing this video. But he actually got arm pump surgery. Now, here's the thing that I completely disagreed with uh, in a conversation. I don't know, I think there were four or five of us talking about it. And um, with my motocross background, I have a very clear understanding of what muscle pumps up, why it pumps up, where it comes from, but also how to avoid it and how to not, not pump up. So let's talk about that. So in the conversation we were having, we we're talking about, you know, the top road races in the world, right? MotoGP, World Superbike, uh, maybe at one time AMA Superbike. I, I don't know. I don't even keep up with Superbike racing here in the United States. I watch all the European stuff, GPs and World Superbike. But we're talking about how much pressure the racers have to put on the handlebars to get the bike to lean at the speeds that these top racers are racing at the lean angles that they're trying to achieve through the corners you really have to manhandle the handlebars people don't realize it but the bike doesn't want to lean over like if i jumped off my bike right now this thing would just keep going straight it would not fall over and that's the whole gyroscopic effect of the front wheel spinning and the weight of the bike and uh uh, and that's where the counter steering comes from, right? We have to counter steer. You actually push the handlebars to the left to get the bike to lean over to the right, and you push the handlebars to the right to get the bike to lean over to the left. That's counter steering. Um, and, you know, riding around on a street bike like we are here right now, not a big deal. You don't really put that much pressure on the handlebars. But when you uh, take into account these guys are going, you know, triple digit speeds, and they've really, really got to push pretty hard and pull on the handlebars to, to get the bike to lean over because it just doesn't want to. It wants to stay up until it gets so slow you lose that gyroscopic effect and you can actually turn the handlebars. Um, come on, my Pay attention. Go, 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 go. You can do it. Push the pedal. Wow. So, um, 
that's where the conversation was going. It's like, well, they got to push so hard on the handlebars to get the bikes to lean, they pump up. And uh, I just, no, that's that's not how arm pump happens. That's not where it comes from, right? So if you look at uh, Danny Pedrosa and his uh, arm pump surgery, they cut into his forearms. Your forearms are where you get your grip strength from. Grip strength is important for pulling, not pushing. Anybody who uh, like does strength training, right? Lifting weights, back squats, bench press, deadlifts, this kinds of these kinds of movements. The push-pull leg grind. Don't skip leg day, people. Don't skip leg day. These people know exactly, or at least they should be, if they've been doing it for any amount of time. You know which muscle groups are being activated for which movements, right? So if you look at like a bench press, like you're pushing something away from your body. It doesn't matter if you're sitting upright and doing um, doing like dumbbell shoulder presses or if you're laying on your back on a classic bench press um, or you could lay on your back and do bench presses with dumbbells or you know th th the point is it's push day you're pushing things away from your body that's what it comes down to and you don't need grip strength for that now there's certain exceptions like if you're working with dumbbells and you're sitting upright and you're doing like dumbbell shoulder presses you need a little bit of grip strength to keep the dumbbells from falling down falling out of your hand or or just you know keeping them in control you need some grip strength but you don't need a lot of grip strength for that grip strength is for your pull days deadlifts these kind of movements where you're you're trying to lift lots of weight off of the floor or off of a rack like you're doing like elevated rack pulls or something like that it's pull day you're pulling something into your body um, you could be on a hammer machine pulling weight to your body that is a nice Nissan GTR dang it I'm not positive I'm not an expert on these cars super fast in a straight line horrible road racers they're just big and heavy and roll and but <laughs> lots of power in a straight line crazy crazy fast and they look good too man it's just just a good looking car i like nissans okay what were we talking about push pull the push pull grind right so now push day what muscles are you using what muscles are responsible for helping you push something away from your body or you know pushing the handlebars to get the bike to lean over to the right ladies and gentlemen the forearm muscle is not involved in this movement your chest your triceps are the supporting muscle maybe your your shoulders your delts depending on the movement that you're doing I would say sitting here on a bike don't have much of anything to do with my forearm but that's the muscle that is uh, uh, classically referred to as, as arm pump. It's your forearms. What do your forearms help you do? Grip strength, right? So imagine a dude doing a deadlift, pulling a bar with plates on it off the floor, into the air, closer to his body. That's a movement where you need tremendous grip strength. You need grip strength, you need biceps a little bit supporting, but it's mostly it's mostly a back exercise, and depending on your form, you can work a little bit of legs in there too. But the point is, you need lots of grip strength to be able to lift that bar off of the floor with everything else, right? Core, back, a little bit of legs, so on and so forth. But the thing is, that's where you get arm pump. And that's why arm pump is such a big deal in motocross. Your form is important for both genres of racing, road racing and motocross. But form is very, very critical when it comes to being able to ride motocross for a long time and not get arm pump. Um, that's hugely important. If you look at the top pros, one thing they're really, really good at is making sure that anytime they're under acceleration, coming out of a turn, landing on a jump, they're way, way over the handlebars. You just imagine the bike is pushing them down the track. You don't need a lot of grip strength to stay on the bike when 
um, you're in this position, the bike is pushing you. Where the grip strength requirement comes in, man, this lady's going super slow. What are you looking at over there? There's nothing over there. Look ahead of you. The grip strength comes in um, when you're hanging off the back of the bike. All of a sudden now, you're gripping the handlebars as hard as you can to stay on the bike. The bike at this point now is pulling you down the track. I did a whole motocross video on this where I was actually at the track trying to demonstrate. I took some pictures of other riders so you could see. You could see different forms like which ones were really, really good at preventing arm pump, which ones were, were not so good, and some that were just kind of mediocre. But the point is, your arm pump generally is associated with your forearm and your forearm is responsible for grip strength and grip strength is what helps you pull things. So now, in the context of road racing, right, if I want the bike to lean over to the right, I'm gonna push, boom, just like that, push this away. I don't even need to grip it. Only reason why I need to grip it is just to keep uh, a constant uh, throttle. I don't, I can just leave my hands like, I'm gonna push this one away, the bike's gonna lean over to the left, right? So I'll just push just like this, boom, bike leans over to the left. Uh, at that same time, I can pull as well. So instead of pushing this away, I can pull it towards me and the bike will lean to the right as if I was pushing with my right hand, but I'm gonna pull with my left hand, right? So if I just take, there's nobody behind me, so I'm just gonna get off the throttle. If I pull, bike leans over to the right. So, these road racers, they are doing a little bit of pull. But if you're getting arm pump from pushing, you're just gripping the handlebars way too tight. That's all it comes down to. In motocross, the problem is you're, you're hanging off the back of the bike too much. There's certain situations where you need to hang off the back of the bike. But as much as possible, under acceleration, coming out of the turns, you want to get over the handlebars and let the bike push you. That way you don't need to grip the handlebars. If you try and manhandle that 250-pound motorcycle, and imagine again, it's motocross. The bike's moving all over the place. It's not like road racing where... Um, you know, you have a nice flat surface for the most part. You might have elevation changes. There might be bumps. Um, but for the most part, the bike is not moving up and down and bouncing all over the dang place and kicking you in the butt and all that kind of stuff, right? So when you got a 250-pound machine bouncing around like that and you're trying to control it with your hands, you're screwed, buddy. You got about two laps of that and then you won't even be able to grip the handlebars anymore. Your arms will pump up so bad you won't be able to feel the brake lever you won't be able to feel the clutch um, and once you get to that point you're toast you're done you're cooked because you're just gonna lose all kinds of control and you're gonna start doing what's called whiskey throttle because you can't feel the handlebars anymore because your forearms are so pumped up you you start accidentally giving it gas when you didn't mean to and uh, that's a horrible feeling so I, I just disagree with this idea that A, that arm pump comes from pushing at all. Because, uh, like I said, I don't need to even grip my grip to push the handlebars. And I've done a bit of road racing, real amateur stuff, only for a few years. Um, but I've done, you know, over a decade of motocross racing. Still amateur stuff, but a lot more of it at higher skill levels. I didn't road race long enough to to get into like a local pro level. But my point is you're not getting arm pump from pushing possibly even pulling. You're getting arm pump because you're squeezing the hell out of your handlebars and you just need to stop doing that man. Especially on a street bike. There's just there's just no need for it. Anyway, that's my opinion. That's that's what I think about arm pump on a street bike. So let me know what you think. Have you ever had arm pump? Uh, whether you ride dirt or street, have you ever had arm pump? What do you think it comes from? And and uh, yeah, let me know what you think about this video. What's up, dude? 
if you liked it give it that big thumbs up and uh, if you haven't already man subscribe if you care to know when I upload another video maybe you don't care I don't know but if you do subscribe man hit the hit the notification bell and uh, YouTube will be all over your shit man sending you emails letting you know monkey butt just uploaded a new video until next time people see you in the next video keep the rubber side down stay safe wash those hands and uh, practice your your safe or social distancing yeah that's it social distancing stay away from me all right see you guys later bye